All right, guys, um, here we go. Wasn't sure that I was going to do this, but I've been real with you thus far, and I feel that it's only appropriate if I'm real with you now. Finals results reveal in two minutes. I did not sleep virtually at all. Um, last night I've been sat here having palpitations um, all morning. It's 12.59, one minute. Uh, I feel terrible, um, to be honest with you. I think this really could have gone either way. Um, but essentially, when this goes live, we're going to find out whether or not I'm going to be a doctor. There are resets if this hasn't gone well. But to be honest, the thought of that, I, I don't know whether I can do it again. <laughs> um, I am full of so much dread. I'm so tired. I'm just so mentally done. I don't know. I don't know how this is going to go. Um, all right, guys, I'm just going to flip the camera around. You're coming with me. Um, let's do it. OK, guys, here we go. This is the link that decides my fate. Here we go. I'm actually shaking. Look at that. Oh. Oh, here we go. Oh. <laughs> oh. We've done it, guys. Um, looks like I'm going to be Dr. Burton. So there we are, guys. Um, sometime later, it's it's the evening now. I was going to make a video straight away, but I just wanted to uh, enjoy the moment a little bit, actually experience it organically, be a bit mindful and in the moment, and give myself, to be honest, some time to get my thoughts together because I I didn't really know what to say. I guess that ultimately what this means is that for better or worse, I'm going to be a doctor. I'm going to be Dr. Burton, which is pretty terrifying because having just been through through the finals process, um, there's just so much that I don't know. Just to kind of take you through what's been going on for the last few weeks while I've been, while I've been away. Our exams basically took place over three weeks. These are our finals. So at Warwick, you have your first year exams where you have your written papers, your multiple choice questions, and then you do your OSCEs to test your clinical skills. Uh, same at the end of the second year, you again have written papers to test your academic knowledge, and you also have some more OSCEs to test your clinical skills. Then phase three of the course, which encompasses essentially the bulk of year three and year four, doesn't have any exams until right at the end, so you don't have any exams in third year, you just keep going for about 18 months, something like that. Going through all of your different clinical rotations, so that's what I've been doing for the last year and a bit. Then you start revising for finals. Finals are a little bit different, because although just like before, you have your, your written, so we had two multiple choice papers, and they were in the first week, 100 multiple choice questions each, best of five. They were on the Thursday and the Friday of the first week, then we flash forward to the following Wednesday, which was our OSCEs. And we had 10 OSCEs, of which you had to pass seven, which again could test anything from taking a short history to doing some sort of clinical skill or examining a patient or performing a clinical examination of, of one of the body systems. And then the final stage, which for me was the following Monday, but for some people it was either the Tuesday or the Wednesday, just because of how complicated these final steps are, you have what's called the long cases or the Oslers, as they're called at Warwick. And this is a long drawn out process where you would, under normal circumstances, you would take a full history from a patient. You would then perform an examination of your choice. You'd then have some time to think about it, usually 15 minutes, and then you'd come back and you would discuss the case with a consultant or an examiner. So going through what you think's going on, the investigations that you would like to carry out, whether that's blood tests, special investigations, clinical imaging. So you could ask for, say, a chest X-ray or a CT scan or a lumbar puncture, something like that. Then you get grilled on your knowledge of the condition. There's a, a viva, as they call it. So for five to 10 minutes, you're just asked questions about the condition, its anatomy, physiology, pathophysiology, treatment, and so on. And then it finishes with some sort of counseling. So you might be asked to explain a procedure that the patient's going to have, or maybe explain the results of a test that they've had. And the idea being that managing these long cases is much more what clinical medicine is going to be like when we're on the wards as doctors. So I think I was quite lucky in that I was able to get mine out of the way on the Monday. I was on the first day. There were a lot of technical hiccups, 
because it was all being done virtually over Microsoft Teams and you can imagine what a nightmare that was. But hats off actually to the exam team at Warwick. Um, none of them will ever see this probably, but I think it's it's worth pointing out before I continue with the video that despite COVID having wrecked everything and almost every aspect of our medical education, the exams team must have worked unbelievably hard in order to get our Rittens, our Oskies and our Oslers to run properly. And it was all socially distanced with masks whenever you want them and we were fed uh, when we needed it and, and, and basically it ran I think about as smoothly as you could have asked for it to. Then we've had a waiting period of about 10 days while we wait to get our marks back and here we are I suppose on day 10. Uh, I've passed. I'm not 100% sure, to be honest with you guys, where where I want to go with this video. I felt like I should make something um, just to keep you updated and to, to celebrate in some small way. But what comes next? I'm theoretically now in my elective period, what would normally be the elective. Unfortunately, uh, my locally arranged elective, or the elective that might have taken place doing some neurosurgery, uh, shadowing and stuff here has been cancelled so I now find myself with a few weeks off that I wasn't expecting so I'm going to keep myself busy. Then after that we have what's called the assistantship coming up which is where we go to the local trusts so for me that's going to be UHCW um, which is great for me because it's the closest one where we'll be shadowing a foundation doctor so we can kind of learn more about what the role is actually going to be like because as ever med school doesn't train you to be a doctor it just trains you how to pass exams and then once we've got the compulsory bits of that signed off then in theory we could move to to pastures new which for me will mean probably mid-july uh, moving up to newcastle i've got my eyes on a place which i'm really excited about and i really hope that i'm able to go to but what i will say is that i am just so overwhelmed with relief to be to be done. It's actually not the last exam that I will sit during med school because I still have my prescribing safety assessment, the PSA, which is a national exam that all medical students have to take in order to be able to prescribe, uh, which I haven't passed yet because for many of us it was delayed uh, due to COVID or we could elect to delay it until after finals, which I did. So I've got that on the 10th of May. I'm not especially worried about that. Um, very few people that I've spoken to have had any problems with it but I am taking it seriously uh, so I need to start prepping for that but as far as the hard stuff goes basically over the hill now guys fingers crossed finals was an immensely stressful experience purely because in a similar way to first year the breadth of stuff that you need to know is just immense and it can often be incredibly obscure not especially clinically relevant questions and quite a few of you have messaged asking for my sort of final study routine and what I did that I now know obviously has helped me get through, I didn't know at the time. But if that is something that you'd like to see or you have any specific questions about my experience of finals, please do let me know down in the comments and I'll try and address those when I can muster the energy to film that video. But what made it more complicated perhaps for me than it, than it otherwise would have been is that, as many of you know, I really wanted an academic job um, the Academic Foundation Programme, which I'm still absolutely over the moon. I got my top choice of programmes in the centre, the exact centre where I wanted to be, which, which I'm obviously super proud of. But getting that job meant that I'd obviously taken on a lot of extra projects and research and, and things that you do outside of medical school in your own time. And unfortunately, a few of those things really came to their conclusion and they needed my attention in the weeks running up to finals. So that's things like the internship that I've been doing with the uh, with the Association for the Study of Medical Education, that's editing the NANSIG neurocartography magazine, and that's something that I don't think I would recommend. Try and be as not busy as possible during finals because it just adds a lot of extra stress. But with all of that said, guys, um, I've done it, we've done it. This has all been a collaborative a collaborative effort true thing for you but genuinely one of my my biggest worries and fears was not being able to make the videos for you guys anymore like it would have brought this journey to an end and it's something that's been an incredibly important creative outlet for me during medical school and it's it's something that i i only have more desire to keep working on and keep making videos i did a poll recently and i was 
I was absolutely overjoyed to see that the vast bulk of you that voted wanted MedEd content um, on the channel above all else. And that's, that's, that makes me so happy. <laughs> and actually being able to, to do that from the position of, of being a doctor who understands a lot more about clinical reality than I do at the moment, that means a lot to me. And it, it really does mean a lot that I can actually help you guys from, from much more of a position of authority and knowledge than I speak to you right now. I do have two more things to show you before this video ends. I made reference in my first year to this. I made a comment that if I could look after this duck and not have it come to any harm or uh, lose it before the end of medical school, then I probably deserve to be a doctor or at least I'm safe to, to be looking after patients. And I don't know, at least I've made it to the other side of exams and the duck has come with me safely and securely. I'll just put him to one side because the other thing that I have here and I've not I've not looked at in a very long time. Um, when I came to medical school, um, my mum got me these and you won't be able to see. These are some, some cufflinks uh, which say, trust me, I'm a doctor um, on them. So obviously finishing medical school, getting through my final exams and actually being able to wear these. I don't know in what context I would wear these. But just having come to the other side and having been deemed satisfactory, which is the highest level of praise that you can receive during medical school, the feeling is just something else, as, as I'm sure you guys will be able to imagine. And um, I'm a little bit overcome, to be honest, guys. And this is actually bringing my medical school journey, this chapter, to a conclusion. Um, the, the whole reason why I even made the YouTube channel at all was so you could see someone going via grad entry medicine, which was sort of poorly documented online at the time, as you know, that you could see someone through their application process, through getting in, through the realities, the ups and downs of medical school, and hopefully come out of the other side intact and, and all right. And that was, that was always the goal. And to be, to be approaching, you know, I've not graduated yet, I've not left medical school, but that moment is coming. It's, it's coming within, within a matter of weeks. And then it will be the start of a brand new chapter um, for my life and for hopefully what you guys will see. Because I'd, I'd love to take you with me, obviously, on that journey and very much plan on doing and transitioning into life as a doctor. So before I wrap this video, I do just again want to end on the, on the slightly sentimental and sappy point that you guys watching this channel and I try to say it as often as I can, but it's true. And if you don't already appreciate it, please appreciate it that having this amazing community of people that have engaged with the content and that have supported me in, in what I do and in, in going on this journey and documenting it and not booing me off the internet, but actually engaging and, and asking questions and taking part and wanting to come to medical school and asking me to look at your personal statements and help you with interview content and all the rest of it. It has been perhaps the single most important extraneous factor actually driving me through medical school. And I don't know whether that is superficial or, or appropriate or silly, but it's true. And as long as we're documenting things, especially those of you that have been here since day one, since the beginning, and I know that many of you have, please do not underestimate the value that you all have to me as a, as a medical student, as, as an incoming doctor, and as a creator, because I have absolutely no doubt that I wouldn't have got this far and I wouldn't have been able to do the incredible things that I've been able to do without the support and the motivation that comes from you guys watching, because it's absolutely true. Um, it is, so thank you guys. I'm, I'm just gonna sign this off, but we've done it. Um, made it to the other side. So I'm Ollie, I'm a fourth year medical student at the University of Warwick. I'm not gonna be one for very much longer. And that's, that's a little bit terrifying. So take care guys, thank you for watching this, this ramble. It's already gone on far too long, but thank you from, from the bottom of my heart for coming with me on this journey and for being part of this process. Thank you.